Oh, wow, it's working. Hang on, guys. Ooh, that's very bright. We're working on some lighting here. That is perfect. Perfect. Except, I can't see the comments. So, whoa. Million people. So hang on. Let's see what these settings look like. That's not it. Oh, there we go. I can see settings. Hey, everyone. So let's give, uh, give it a minute. I'm very excited that this is working. What I am going to do, though, is I have my, hey, Meryl, I have my laptop here. Why doesn't everybody say hello? That's perfect. Okay, we have people. We have comments. I'm going to lower this a little bit. Hey, Karen, the cookie lady. Okay, this is a little bit of romper roomish. So I just want to make sure y'all can see me. And I may repeat comments while we're doing this because I cannot remember if I will be saving this. And I can't remember if in the saved version, comments are visible or not. So my eyes are going to be dotting around down to the comments. I'm looking at the screen over there as well. I have questions to ask y'all. I have quotes that I printed out. So before we hop into the discussion, uh, let's talk about the wine that I chose for this evening. If you watch me on Instagram stories, you know I had quite a few bottles of wine to choose from. I'm into Cabernet lately. There are people in this house that didn't turn off their phones. Anyway, um, and I asked all of you for your input, and the one that I picked, you like how I stuck the cork in, um, is Foley Johnson. It's a 2011 Cabernet Sauvignon. Here is the problem with all my wine options. They were all very expensive wine options. My next door neighbors owned a restaurant for 30 years, and they retired and closed the restaurant and took home the wine cellar, and they don't drink. So they keep showing up at my house with bottles of wine. I'm not going to complain, but I'm very, very spoiled. So let's all take a sip of whatever beverage you have. Ooh, that's pretty good. That was my first sip. Okay. Let's get, I also have just fizzy water in case I'm really thirsty. Let's get into the book. So have we all read, hey Mary. Have we all read The Deep End? I assume y'all have, because you're all here. And I do have a giveaway, but I'm not gonna do the giveaway here. I will announce the giveaway here. I do have a signed copy of the book. I have two signed copies. Um, one has my name on it, and one has the author sheet there to anyone who wants it. So I have a copy of the book, and she also mm -hmm. sent me three audio, the CD versions, the audio books of three more books in the series. Um, I can't remember which order they go in. Walking the Detectives, Shadow Dancing, I have my ring light on because it is eight o'clock at night, and Cold as Ice. So I will be posting this on the Facebook book club page and um, I'll set up the giveaway there and it's open to anyone. Okay. Let's get started. I took notes. There was not a discussion guide anywhere that I could find. So I made up my own questions. I feel so scholarly. So let's start with the big one. And here's what I think we'll do. I'll read the question and then I'll start reading the comments and we'll kind of go from there um, and see how this goes. And if anyone has a better suggestion of how to do this, let me know. So. The Deep End. It is set in 1974. I was alive then, but I was only a year old. So I have no memory of that time. But a big recurring theme of the book are social norms, expectations, social mores, society rules, societal rules. Um, it's a recurring theme throughout the book. What ex people's expectations are of you, of your behavior, of the way you dress and carry it yourself um, in public. So my question to you, very quiet, is the way those rules were described in 1974, do you think any of them still are valid today in 2019? Not in a judge, judgy way, but do you feel like those sorts of expectations on a certain group of people, particularly upper class to middle, upper middle class women, are still applicable in present day? Somebody spit something out. Here 
Okay, we have one for sure. Some of them, yes. In some social class classes and cultures, I think so. Yes, yes. Okay, I know there's 87 of you. Um, that's interesting. So, so far, everyone is saying yes. Some, at least some of these rules still apply. So here's my next question. Oh, Mary has an interesting point. She said more working women in the workplace has changed them somewhat. So which, which of the ones, Yes, women do dress for other women. That has not changed at all, don't you think? Okay, you wanna know what I think. I think, I think that they do. I think I can only speak for the socioeconomic status that I am familiar with. Um, I think in some ways it may have been easier for women that let me, let me retract that. Hang on a minute. I think that we are changing things, but the societal rules are still there. And the role that I was always most comfortable in was still that traditional, you get married, you have babies, you stay at home, you raise them. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think we've reached a period, almost 40 years later, is that now there are choices and you're not a bad person mom, a bad woman for choosing a slightly different path, but I still feel like the pressure is very much there to still do the traditional stay at home mom, get married to a nice guy. Um, but as Meryl is saying, and I was about to say, and now it's twice as, much, as difficult because you're still expected to be the perfect wife, the perfect mother and have a job and be great at that. And I just don't know how you do that. It's difficult. Um, for most people in a traditional work setting. Um, and that's a whole discussion about, I have a very strong opinion that I rarely share, um, and Mary just hit it. We tell our young girls, you can have it all, and I think that is a lie that we need to stop telling, our not just our young girls, but all young people, because you cannot have it all. Something has to give. Um, if you want to be the most successful person in your job, you will probably have to give up something on the personal life side of things, whether that's a personal relationship with a partner or your children. That's for the vast majority of people. That is just how it is. And if you want to be super hands-on parent and involved with your home life, then you can't possibly devote 100% to your job, whether you're a mother or a father. You cannot do both. I'm not saying you're going to be bad at one and not good at, good at the other, but there is a lot of sacrifice to do one or the other. And Amy C., you nailed it. You can have it all, just not all at once. Um, I mean, I just, I think that that is a bill of goods we're selling our younger generation and then they don't understand why they can't have it all. Um, and they put pressure on themselves that shouldn't exist. But that's a whole other discussion. Okay, so going back to social mores and social expectations, do you follow any of those? Do you feel like you have to present yourself a certain way or is it only in certain situations? Are there roles that you feel you have to be in or that you're more comfortable? I'm just noticing there's something on the bottom of this. It's a recipe for a mixed drink. Got real quiet again. Nobody wants to admit it. I will tell you where I fall back into more traditional roles is when I'm unsure about how to conduct myself, like maybe a funeral or you know somewhere a very a social situation that I don't encounter frequently. I fall back into. Okay, we'll just be very proper. I guess it's etiquette. Um, and it's not that I'm not myself. It's just when you're not sure how to behave, the rules of etiquette come into play. And I think really that's what etiquette is. I, that's what I like about etiquette is it gives you a way to navigate uncertain situations. Um, Meryl, I think you should be a co-leader co in this. Like I wish I could pop you on here to moderate. Does anyone else ever fall into that? Mary is having some very insightful, she, Mary said etiquette is a guide to living in society. Um, 
Most of the time I have problems with shoes not matching my bag. Do you remember that rule? I mean, I remember that was a hard and fast rule. You don't wear white before Memorial Day or after Labor Day. Your shoes match your belt, match your purse. Um, it's just certain things. Thank you, Absolute Pink. Um, I think those are more fashion rules, but your mother still lives by those rules. I do find, I for those of you who don't know, I grew up in the Chicago area. I've spent my entire adult life in Texas and I've been spending the last three years a lot of time in Mississippi, which I thought Texas was the South. No, ma'am, Mississippi is the South, as are Georgia, Alabama, whatever. And I feel like those social expectations are definitely um, still very much in play in the South. And I thought it was really interesting that this book is set in Kansas City, which is smack dab in the Midwest. But to me, it felt like a very Southern book. Did anybody get that? See that at all? Like you don't think of the Midwest. I don't think of the Midwest as a particularly rigid, very polite society. I find that most Midwesterners are pretty laid back, but I felt like this book read like it was set in the South. Like present day. 1974, Cleveland, Tennessee. Country Club, yeah. Kansas City must have serious Southern influence. Especially like she refers to Lily Pulitzer. Nobody up North wears Lily Pulitzer. That is definitely a Southern thing. I never saw it growing up in Chicago. I had never heard of it. Um, it's interesting. Okay, here's here's a here's a little controversial question. Do you think there are different sets of behavior rules for different types of socioeconomic groups? I was a sociology major. I had to throw that word in there. Do you think different? And again, not judgy, it's just a fact. There are different kinds of cultural socioeconomic groups. They have their, maybe or might not have their own sets of rules and expected behavior. Does anybody, okay, yes, we're getting a lot of consensus. There are different rules. Interesting. Lily's very popular in Boston, okay, in the summer. That makes sense, I think. I'm from North Dakota, but I, I read women's wear daily. Well, there's no reason why you shouldn't. Um, so, okay, people are agreeing that there are different sets of behavior rules. It is the, the survivor's guide. You don't expect to see a wealthy woman. woman in, well, that was my next question, Lauren. Um, do only wealthy people care about these rules, do we think? I mean, I can't speak for all people. Um... Do we think that only wealthy people care about certain sets of rules or do you really feel like you could get as much slack in a lower income rural setting versus a middle class suburban setting? Totally Karen Kay. Excellent, she said when your parents have a certain socioeconomic standing they instill certain standards in their children. It was interesting, I taught second grade in a Title I school here in San Antonio. Um, and we had to do a life cycle thing where the kids had to paste a collage of like all the major life events on a timeline. And the parents got upset, some of them with me, because I had put going to college as one of the options. And I had a few parents approach me at pickup and say, why are you doing that? Our kids aren't going to college. We only graduated from middle school. We're fine. Why would you tell them they need to go to college? And it had never occurred to me, being a 24 year old inexperienced person to think that everyone didn't want what I was raised to want. It's just incredible. That was very naive. Um, it was interesting. It was just, it was an interesting perspective. And I was like, I gave it as an option. I didn't say they had to go. But it was definitely eye-opening. That was 1997. 
Okay, got real quiet. I'm a little scared there. So, I think it's what you're taught. I think so too. I don't think it's necessarily money. Um, can you hear my dog flipping his bowl in the background, by the way? We just fed them late so that they would be quiet during this, but. Yes, as the counter says, money cannot buy you class. Um, and I wasn't raised with money myself. I was raised around it, but I wasn't raised with it. So, um, that's a good point. Claire Kirby says, when you walk around London, you'll see a certain type of woman well-dressed with hair, makeup, and bag, and then you see the tourists dressed down, relaxed, definitely have different classes, social groups, which, if you think about it, if you're a tourist in, um, London, you probably have a good amount of money if you can afford to get there. So you're right. There's different, different roles. Okay. So let's get off this slightly controversial topic and jump into another one. And the reason I bring this up, it's not to judge one group or the other. This group is right or this group is wrong. I think it's really to raise, for me, I'm like trying to raise the point that everyone's path can be right, even if it's a different one. It just isn't the one you want to walk on. And that's okay. Um, I think most, I know that I went through the first 24 years of my life thinking that um, everyone thought like me. <laughs> you know, I mean, I grew up in a little bubble. So it was, it's, I think it's interesting. Okay, controversial, oh, and now I have an eyelash in my eye. Okay. Yep, this is gonna be awful. Okay, next controversial question. Would you choose, so I assume everyone here has read the book, so I'm not giving anything away. So our main character, Allison, is well aware that her husband is being unfaithful to her. And what blows my mind is that everyone around her knows that her husband is being unfaithful to her and nobody talks about it. So my question is, would you choose to pretend your husband is faithful in public to preserve your marriage, social standing, your family situation? Would you go along with that for the sake? In her case, she decides to go along with it until her daughter graduates and leaves the house and goes to college because she feels like it's more important to have this intact family. Could you? <laughs> There'd be a very public shoot. Okay, so if you don't remember in the book, she walks in on her husband and his mistress getting it on in the coat room at the club. And there would be a very public um, shooting if I were to walk in on that. that I cannot, I cannot, I cannot even imagine. I can't. Um, she did it for her daughter. Yeah. But at the same time, I very much understand what if, okay, so let's switch it. What if nobody knew that it was happening? It was very discreet. Nobody knew except you. Would you still, and you were civil to each other, would you still stay married until the child left just for them to have a mom and dad at home? And I'm not, again, I know people who are doing it right now. It's not my, I can't judge for them. I don't know. Um, I mean, a lot of women who have not had a job in 20 years and don't have a, like any way to make a living, that is a very scary, it's very scary to think, okay, that's it, you're out, but I don't have an income, I don't have a way of supporting myself, my child's gonna be 18, we won't have child support. I mean, this is, these are discussions I've had with friends who have been debating this, um, this situation. And it's, it's, it's simple, it's easy for your gut to say, I'm out. But I understand where the fear is, like how at 40 something, at 50 something, how do I support myself? That, I could see where that would be terrifying. Um, yeah, so, it's just an inch, I'm reading your questions. It still happens today. They don't want to give up their current lifestyle, or maybe they can't. Um, Mary says, I've always been the breadwinner, so not a problem. And I do think that that, I mean, I have seen, I have seen marriages fall apart that I knew were bad, but as soon as the wife 
found a way to support herself. The marriage was over. She was out. Um, it's, it's, an inter it's interesting. I love that y'all are talking amongst yourselves. This makes me so happy. Of course, I'm going to run out of questions at the rate we're going here. I only have like two left. I just don't think I could. I pers I will answer this. In the situation. Um, so I can't say. I think it would not be an easy choice to come to for a lot of reasons. But I don't think I would be setting a great example for my kids, boys or girls, to stay in a situation like that. Either way, you're, you're showing your children, if it's a girl, you're showing your daughter that it's okay to be a doormat and treated like garbage. And if you are you have sons, then you're teaching them that it's okay to treat women that way. And everyone who thinks the kids don't know, they know. They always know. Kids are very intuitive. So my gut says that. Now, should you just race into it with no plan? Probably not. This is what I have advised. What if it's the woman having the affair? Well, then she's already made her bed. She needs to go sleep in it, literally. Um, yeah, I know that happens. Like, as It's interesting. As we've gotten older, as our kids have gotten older, the stuff that comes out about couples that you knew, it's like, wow, you know, you see stuff on TV and in the movies and you think, oh, that's just in the TV or movies. And now real life is fascinating and slightly terrifying. Okay, so let's see if we can keep this controversy going. Okay, and then you, I want you guys, you know, I don't have to drive this bus for the whole hour, right? I don't know any women who have time for affairs, so you'd be surprised. Um, okay, so central to this also is Ellison's relationship with her mother, um, who very much reminds me of Grace from Grace, Frankie and Grace, Grace and Frankie, the show on Netflix, if you haven't seen it in my head, it's Jane Fonda, I don't know. Anyway, um, okay, so the relationship with, um, hang on, I'm getting a text. The relationship that Ellison has with her mom. Does your own mother have that much influence on you as an adult woman? Georgia raises a point. There's cheating and then there's cheating with three other women with whips and chains. We'll get to that. In fact, let me write that down. Um... Why and why? Why do we think that Ellison lets her mother dictate her life like that? Her mother and her father to some degree. I mean, she is a, literally a grown-ass woman with a teenage daughter. Do you know anybody in real life like that? I, I, not to that degree, not to that level. Oh, Adriana, I'm sorry. Her mother is scary. Marie Diana said, my mother's my role model, strong and confident, gave me the roots to grow and wings to fly. That is a good mom. Okay, good point. She thinks it was the 70s. Um, I think also very, I think maybe that's where I get the Southern part from as well. Um, okay, Liana knows someone, her sister-in-law with her mother. So let me ask you this, Liana, without getting you in trouble with your family. Do you find that your sister-in-law is in general a strong woman aside from that? Or do you, is it a weakness of character? Was that the time? It was just easier to, um, yes, I'm playing with my hair. I just cut it and I'm not sure how I feel about it. I mean, I certainly do not have that relationship with my mother. That's funny. I can't even imagine. Mm. I just like to see if my husband is listening and he is, he's got his headphones on, noise canceling. We can just talk about him. She's a graduate from Ole Miss. Woo, okay, Liana. So she's a, she's a strong Southern girl though. Um, you are your mother's mother, so no. Yeah, I hear you. Well, okay, Lenny B. So we think her mother was a controlling person, but was she a controlling person or was Ellison the kind of person that in her own way liked to be controlled and let it continue to happen? 
Although clearly she has a limit to how much control she wants to be under because she's not into the Club K scene. God, I wish you guys were all here with me. It'd be so much more fun than essentially. Look at the difference between Allison and her sister. Well, her sister, if you notice, moved away. So she was physically away from the sphere of her mother's influence. And married to the condom king, I know. Oh my gosh, I have so many. Um, after we get through with my questions, I have so many lines I wanna read from you that I um, just cracked me up. This was a very funny um, book. If she went as much as she was in her way showing respect to her mother. She was pretty dang close now that you look back. I'm sorry you lost your mom. Okay. Condom king. Um, it's funny to, it's not funny. It was fun for me to watch Ellison's character as it arced and grew and changed throughout the story. But, um, the author's dry sense of humor throughout this entire series is what makes this whole series fabulous. Okay. Here we go. I really liked the dad in the end. I liked the dad too. I was so, yeah, that was really good. Okay. Allison did not confide in her mother or the police in order to protect her daughter. Do you agree with her decision? Speak while I continue to drink my wine. F. Naha agrees. Lenny B. does not. Okay, we all love the dad. I love it. He's like, screw this. I'm going to the farm. You would do the same even knowing it was wrong. Okay. Should have talked to the police. I don't have an answer. I honestly don't know what I would do. If it was that small of a community where if it got out, it would destroy her daughter. I don't know. I don't think that's an easy, it's easy, like I said, from our side. Okay, I agree. I know this is fiction. But she could have died. That would have been bad. That can go to confession. <laughs> I mean, hang on, I'm trying to cross my legs. I understand, I truly as a mother understand what she was doing to protect her child. And I think it seems like that social group is pretty um, ruthless. But obviously in the end it worked out for her because this is a book. But I think in that situation, I would not have confided in my mother. I would not have, I would have talk to the detective, I think. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a rule follower, I believe in authority, I'm a fan of the police, generally. I think I would have, especially one that appears to have been as cute as anarchy, um, I would have, I would have probably ended up telling the police something, and maybe not all of it, but something to move the investigation along. Okay, here's a big question. If you were in Allison's position and you found an envelope that you knew was to blackmail your dad, would you open it? Or would you burn it? That's a tough one. I just don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'll be honest, I can't even read the gossip sites about me. So I, ooh, I don't know. I think, I know what I do. I would have a friend open it for me. That's what I would do. Like a very close trusted friend. And let me know if it's something I need to see. That's what, because I can't stand not knowing, but at the same time, I there's things you can't unsee. And knowing that there's pictures in there, mm-mm. Nope, don't want to see what could have been in there. So I think that's what I would do. I have a best friend and I would give it to her and be like, you need to look at it for me and then tell me if I need to know this or not. But I don't think she had a friend like that. Well, 
keep reading the series, but I don't know that she had a friend quite like that. Okay, here's a less loaded question. A lot of this book, I think like one of the main characters of this book is the fashion. And if you keep reading this series, it doesn't stop. So do we think the country club? Yeah, you could ask Mistress Kate a look. Um, do you think country club fashion has changed um, in the last 40 years? Why put that pressure on your friend? I don't know, because that's what best friends are for. Now you don't want to say spoilers. Brandy, I know. It was such a good series. I want to reread it. Um, do we think that it's changed that much? Because I got to tell you, especially hanging out in Mississippi, khaki pants, Lily Pulitzer, and needlepoint belts are still huge. And it's like... In fact, I think there's seven, seven or eight books in the series. In fact, it's hysterical to me. It kind of tells me I need to go with the classic fashions because, I mean, apparently if I invested in some needlepoint belts and some vintage Lee Pulitzer, I'd be set, right? I mean, it's, I mean, it's pretty funny. Now, we've belonged to a country club and we belong to a golf club now and that specific fashion is kind of gone. Like when we first joined our old country club, there was still rules in place that you could not wear denim in the clubhouse after a certain hour. You couldn't wear denim in the dining room. Um, you couldn't wear distressed pants. You couldn't wear shorts. All shirts have to be collared on the course. I think that rule's still in play. Um, I do know that not too long ago they got rid of the no denim rule. I mean, it's interesting that so that sort of stuff changes, but in fashion in general, I think, um, I mean, I think people still like to get dressed up in general. I wouldn't say country club specific, but I just think it's funny that it's 40 years later and fashion hasn't changed that much. The names that she's dropping are still around and and worn and loved so a needlepoint belt for those of you I'm like looking around like one's sitting here um so it's a man's belt and instead of leather it has leather at the ends but the whole body of the belt is like it looks like a needlepoint um pillow kind of I don't know what to say it's it's very big on wallets and keychains and belts. So, yeah, it was supposed to say 8 p.m. Central Time, and for some reason they bumped it to somewhere. Some, so, sorry. But I will be taping this or re -put, putting it up when we're all done. So if you miss the first 30 minutes, it'll be back. Yeah, Tory Burch just, I mean, those fashions are still around. It's just that some of the fashion has relaxed. Okay, so here's the big question, and then we'll get to some quotes, and if anyone else wants to share their insight, then we can just talk amongst ourselves. So at the end of the book, who would you pick? The detective or the lawyer? Lexi, seriously? It says book club. Okay, we're going with the detective, the detective. Oh, we've got one for the lawyer. I'm rooting for the lawyer. The lawyer, do we know that they slept with her sister? I mean, they dated in high school. This was in the 60s. Did they sleep together? Oh, poor Hunter. He's not getting any votes. Everyone's going for the detective. Okay, admittedly, I would go for the detective as well. Okay, Lexi, I'm sorry. There is a book here. It is this book. It is Marge Book Club. So is this book. The thing about the lawyer that's just a little off-putting is he's been married three times. I mean, really? Ick. Right, Nito Keto? No. Ooh, Diamond L thinks that the lawyer was the killer up until the end. Or that she was thinking he could have been the killer. Hunter is sexy, the man knows how to dance. 
Lawyer's just a good, yeah, you know, that's not a bad idea. Good rebound guy. I like how you guys think. We are, we are, we need help. Um, I was about to ask you a question and now it's just totally. That's what I was gonna say, Missy. Did anyone figure out who the killer was? I will tell you I did not the first time, obviously the first time I read the book, um, when I was reading it the second time through, um, it still wasn't that obvious. But I will say, it jumped out at me the first time I read the book, not that he was the killer, but um, when, God, what's his name? Powers. When he was talking about selling, his mother was talking about selling all these Picassos. Now, I don't know a lot about the art world, but like, I know when you auction a Picasso, it's a, my comments are covering my head, it's a big deal. So, why, where was he getting all these Picassos? Like, I don't think there's Picassos laying around just waiting to be auctioned off. Was Picasso still alive in the 70s? Perhaps. But my point is, um, not until, like, way towards the end where I'm like, okay, why is he so interested in all this? Um, but for me, it just seemed odd that he had all these Picassos laying around that he could sell, or that all these rich people were coming to this guy in the middle of the country to sell their unwanted Picassos. Because those things, it's kind of a big deal when one of those hits the market. But I didn't think he was the killer. I just thought that was weird. I honestly thought it had to be connected to someone they were blackmailing or... Okay, and let's get to that. Like, we haven't even addressed the club K scene. Do those clubs really exist? Do we think those exist? Am I that naive to think? Nah, can't possibly. Wait, what did you say about you figured it out one? Choked on the gun. They do exist? What? For real? I mean, is that legal? You thought Ellison's mom was the killer. <laughs> oh, no way. Lauren, for real? It's the post Fifty Shades rule. Okay, my last book club read Fifty Shades of Grey, and I gotta tell you, that ruined the way I look at some people, that book club. I thought it was like maybe one of the moms. Like one of the, one of her mom's friends. Like you could kind of see one of them going off the deep end, so to speak. Um, the parking lot was always full. Huh. I couldn't finish the book. I thought Fifty Shades of Grey was disgusting. Um, never saw the movies. And I have to admit, I got to the point in the book where they got to the contract. And there were some lines in that contract. I was like... That's really gross. I can't even say them on YouTube because this will probably get dinged. But, excuse me, there was, um, it was gross. I'm sorry. I'm judgy. It was gross. And anyway, so I was like, yep, nope, we're done. Closing this book up. And then we get to our book club meeting and there were women in there. They were like, this is so good. I got so turned on. And I'm like, okay, we cannot be friends. I can't look at you now. Like, no. I have to say this, as a book of fiction, it was poorly written. As softcore porn, not really well written either. So like, pick a lane and do it well. Okay, anyway, we digress. Let's talk about some of my favorite lines. Okay. Um, so, I have to admit, I have a line runner. So, when I saw that there was, that the lead character has a wine runner, I was like, yes. So she describes, it's on page one, it says, after all, I have a teenage daughter, a mother with strong opinions, a wine runner named Max, who plots to take over our house on his path toward world domination and a husband. If you don't know wine runners, that is it right there. Love it. I have heard that Fifty Shades is Twilight fan fiction. Twilight wasn't one of my favorite books either. Okay, let me, let me um, read you this line. Page two, there's a lot here. There's something, and I wanna know your opinion on this one. This isn't funny, this is just interesting. There's something comforting about someone who colors within the lines. Problems arise when a strict follower of rules decides to forsake them. 
He doesn't just jaywalk. Nope. A lifetime of good behavior gives him the right to sleep with other women or, if he's slightly more powerful, order a break-in at Watergate. Goes to show you can't trust anyone these days. Not husbands, not presidents, not cops. Now, I know this was written in present day, not in 1974. But it's kind of interesting, isn't it? And I understand there is something nice about being about a predictable relationship, a predictable situation. Just it struck me as a very interesting line. Okay, this one was have I lost weight? No, sadly no. No. I've been eating marshmallows again. It's my weakness. Um Okay, I loved this line. I think it was her mother that said this. It was on page 12. Don't be silly, Ellison. You need a man to look out for you. I'll call him for you. I mean, really. Now, this is from J.C. Penney. Thank you very much. Um, have you ever encountered a situation where you were told you need a man to help you? I have. Anyone else? I mean, I think most of us as women, I don't know if we're all women in here, but most of us have encountered, like for me, um, Michael used to work a lot and travel a lot. He was gone a lot. And, you know, there were lots of home repairs and things that would come up. And I would have guys come to fix something in the house and say, um, okay, I can tell you what's wrong, but I'd rather just talk to your husband because he'll understand. I was like, no. He, he, he's not here and I get it. So I've had that kind of situation where like a, a repair type person would rather speak to my husband than me. They weren't asked back. It got real quiet. I know there's 139 of you in here. Somebody say something. All right. I'll get on to the next one. I mean, it was like 2000 something. Car mechanics, yeah. Has that changed? I feel like it's changed. I feel like it's not. I, I've not encountered that in a really long time. That could be a generational thing. Prairie makeup, there's a lot. There's 45 minutes we could catch you up on, but luckily I'm saving this so you can watch. Okay. Thou shalt not air dirty laundry in public. What do we think of that? I say from a YouTuber's perspective, I personally very much agree with that. And I really, this goes to that truthful YouTuber tag. I did just film it and then I realized that I forgot to add something. So um, be sure you're, you're watching. I don't know when that would come up. What's today? I think it comes up Tuesday or Friday, next Friday. I'm putting up the truthful YouTubers tag. And as it's a personal pet peeve of mine when YouTubers start airing their personal beefs with like other YouTubers. This, no, just grow up, take care of it. Um, I find that the person that airs it, it makes them just look bad. Just deal with it. Okay, which goes with number the next one. Thou shalt not make a spectacle of thyself by displaying emotion. I'm still working on that. <laughs> I can I can fly up the handle a little bit in public sometimes. Lee Moore, hey. Long time no see. Um, because I know in retrospect, if you're an outsider looking in on a situation, the person getting upset looks like a crazy person. Okay, do YouTubers actually clear stuff up personally with other YouTubers? Well, I do. Um, I can't speak for everybody. Cheaters. <laughs> Lauren's like, 
I want her to just shout out from the rooftop that her fellow country club women were cheaters. Not that they, not the most classy, but I hated that they faked it. I think that is society still to this day. Um, here's an interesting thing. Of all the things my mother taught me, how to plan a party, how to begin with the silverware on the outside and work my way in, a good thing to know, how to smile sweetly when I wanted to rage, why hadn't she showed me how to handle a crying man? Um, interesting that we still don't, I think it's still true that we don't look on a crying man the same way we look at, at a crying woman. We just don't. Nothing has really changed. Everyone's agreeing with that one. Men are not supposed to, men were not supposed to cry in that day, but I don't think, I will admit that seeing a man cry makes me very uncomfortable. I like her mama wouldn't have handled a crying man. She wouldn't have allowed that weakness. I mean, it's terrible for, I mean, I'm the mother of sons. I just, I don't know how to handle it. And should it be different? It shouldn't be different. A crying human is a crying human. Like, they're obviously, I'm working. I'm not saying, I'm a work in progress, okay? I'm still working on it. Okay. Let's see what else I wanted to share with you. Um, I like this one. She's talking about her lawyer, Hunter. And she says, Hunter Taft was my lawyer, not my friend. It was better that way. Friends drank too much wine and repeated your secrets at cocktail parties. They told you that you looked fabulous in a dress that make you look like a pregnant elephant. They borrow your favorite sweater and forgot to return it. And I've never had a relationship with an attorney that I'm not married to or related to. But I guess there is something freeing in that. Bye, Liana. 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 Anyway, I think there's something freeing in that, that they don't have to tell you the nice things. Is this organized in some fashion? Not really, Lexi. No, it's really not. It's kind of the fun. I know. Neato Keto, I had a little issue with that, too. I didn't buy that part about Elson getting guilted into going to the weird club. I mean, either admit that you were curious yourself or Tom, no, I'm not freaking going, dude. Take yourself, go for yourself. That part didn't really fit because if she was so concerned with appearances, why on earth would she be seen in public with the spouse of her husband's mistress going to a kinky club? That, that part fell a little flat for me. And also, if I met, what was her name? Mistress, what the heck was that woman's name? Uh, I don't know, the, the dominatrix chick. If she had pulled that crap with me, that whole attitude, I would have been like, are you freaking kidding me? You're wearing pleather, get over yourself. I mean, I couldn't, there's no way. Mistress K, thank you. I, I would have started laughing or just been like, you are foolish. Like, no, I'm sorry, cut the bullshit. I mean, how can you take someone seriously in one of those outfits? You just, you, in broad daylight, like it's daytime. No, not that I've actually seen anyone in person wearing that, but like, come on. <laughs> no. And when she showed up in her, ho in her hotel, in her hospital room, come on. Right, Lauren? Thank you. Kind of in my head, she's coming to the end of her organic wine. Still need to draft a protocol for my office on how to maneuver the new EHR. I don't even know what that is, but I'm glad that I helped you pass 49 minutes. Um, yeah, when she started strapping Roger in, wasn't that his name? I would have been like, I'm done. I'm out of here. Y'all are freaks. Bye. And I need some Lysol. Anyway, okay. I had a couple more, but let's just chat amongst ourselves. Um, I'm getting texts from Lisa J Makeup, but I can't text her right now. Sorry, Lisa. Um, does anyone just want to offer their own insights? I've literally moved this along for 50 minutes. I've completely monopolized the conversation. What do you guys want to talk about with this book? What did you think? 
Roger taking her to the funeral was bizarre and didn't fit in my opinion. Well, Lauren, I thought about that. So we can all sort of sympathize with Ellison for putting up with her husband's disgusting antics because she was trying to preserve her family. But a man who put up with that, I think, is pretty weak. So he seems like a weak guy and it, it kind of looks like he likes that kind of, you'd be into that. Um, so I could kind of, I could kind of see it. He would be easily persuaded into doing something gross and distasteful. Sexual revolution of the 1970s. Traditionally, society was being turned upside down by free love, etc. Times were changing. I, I didn't know that was all going on back then. You read all of them. Where you read all of them already. I've read every single one in the series. And I've gone on to read her other series, which has nothing to do with this series. Um, she, okay, F. Naha wondered what Ellison thought about her parents' relationship. Did she think there was a sexually compromising picture of her dad in that envelope? I certainly did. Who didn't? That's what I thought. I thought that's what would be in there. I know who brings a date to your wife's funeral. That's pretty gross. I can't even imagine. But who puts up with getting publicly cheated on for like, how long was that going on? Months? Years? I mean, okay, I'm getting a little buzzed up my one glass of wine. I am a cheap date. So who is going to read, if you haven't already, who plans on reading the rest of the series? Which I have to say are all available, I think, on my library's website. Um, okay, we've got one. And like I said, if you weren't here at the very beginning, I do have a signed copy of the book from the author that I'm going to be giving away, as well as, I'll do that separately, these three CDs Shadow Dancing, which is, does it say what number it is? It does not, but it's set in 1975. Uh, watching the Detectives, again, not really sure when this one is, and uh, Cold as Ice. And Lexi says, I have forgiven a cheater. It's not easy. Can anyone else? I don't think I could. Yeah, Poppy is the next series. Um, I don't, I, Lexi asked a really good question. I don't think I could. I think I would always in my head picture them with the other person. And that would, I could never get past that. Um, I don't, I just, I, that's, I know that. No, not even my, no, no, I couldn't. Because in my head, I would always be picturing them with the other person, and I don't think I could get past that. So. <clears throat> you don't like to spend the money on quick reads? I get that, Nito Keto. I very much get that. It's, uh, I, I'm just not that forgiving of a person. Um. I have a job. Okay, you know, Lexi, I don't really like you. <laughs> okay. Um, oh my God, she's still here. Hang on. Oop, there we go. Okay, yeah. Kind of like Lexi just demonstrated Generally, people, when they show you who they are, believe them. So, bye-bye. Okay, so we have a few minutes left. Let's talk about April's selection. Here's the thing. I am traveling twice for a good amount of time in April. Um, there's the holidays, Easter or Passover, depending on where you fall on that. Um... There's just a lot going on in April. So, I'm sorry to say, there will not be an April book club. However, 
Um, my friend Michaela has written a book. She is a YouTuber. Um, and I really want to read her book because it looks fascinating to me. So I'm thinking that we can either recommend it and read it through April or we can reconvene in May and discuss it. Um, it's not a long book, so maybe we should just do it in April. What do we think? It's, um, I really want to support her and the book looks really interesting and full disclosure, she asked me to write a blurb for it and I totally forgot. So there's no blurb for me in the book, but I really want to, uh, it's, it's a real book. I mean, it's, real. it's a nonfiction book. The wine is definitely helping me to forget one glass of wine and I'm out. Um, so let me Google it. Hang on. Yeah, maybe we'll just do it in the middle of May. Okay, hang on. Let me pull up Amazon. She's on Amazon. It's pretty awesome. The thing is, I don't think this is a book that you can get in the library. Hang on. And so that's why I'm a little bit hesitant, like, because I don't want anyone to be feel like they're forced to read, to buy a book. But at the same time, I very much want to support my friend. Okay. It's not that, ex okay, it's Life Styling is the name of the book. Simple Steps for Mums to Find Style and Confidence. And it is $7.99 on Kindle. And it is $13.36 paperback. And let me read you the blurb. How many of you just pulled up Amazon? I think my, my alcohol allergy seems to be fine with Cabernet. I don't know. Okay, so here, let me read you the blurb. Okay, number one Amazon new release. Seriously. An inspirational fashion book for the everyday woman. I have to admit, I've never read a book like this. Fans of the style lessons of the curated closet and lessons from Madame Chic and the can-do motivation of Girl, Wash Your Face, ugh, that book, will love lifestyling. For women who happen to be mums, whether... Um, you had a sense of style and lost it or never really took the time to think about what you like to wear, this is the book for you. Style Basics and Minimalism for Beginners. Um, it will help you pack your perfectly organized bags and take you on a journey from the very basics to the dream minimalist capsule wardrobe. It will also help you navigate the social media obsessed landscape of personal style along the way. Learn about the pros and cons of living in this Insta world and how it's affected not only the way that we dress, but our expectations and how we feel about ourselves. Discover the importance of underwear and a good pair of jeans and why you should be super excited that uh, leggings are back. Lifestyling will help you learn your colors, what styles will flatter your shape and lifestyle, and how to save money by shopping smarter and making the clothes you already own work a little harder. Whether you're in a style evolution, wherever you are, in your style evolution, it's important to recognize who you are. Identifying what makes you happy when you open your closet doors is a step in the right direction. Lifestyling will help you do just that. I don't know. What do we think? Frumpy feeling pregnant girl. Let me tell you. When I was pregnant, that's when I wore the craziest and most outlandish stuff. Because I was like, why not? Why not? I don't know. Let's see. Do we have reviews? She is a blogger. So she's good at writing, actually. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the author. Michaela McDade is a 32-year-old UK blogger, wife, and mom of two. She had her daughter when she was 19. Um, the undiscovered team mom MTV didn't know they always wanted and so has grown up conflicted between being young and fun and being responsible. She's also never quite found her own personal style as a result. Having dabbled with what other moms at school whispered was midlife crisis and alternative fashion in the past, she's finally found a balance between boring mom and embarrassing, her daughter's words. I mean, I love her, but I am completely biased because we're friends. So there is that. But I think it would be a fun, quick read and maybe something that we don't need to devote a whole hour to. I'll put it out there. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to make the executive decision. That's what we're doing. That's what we're reading. Lifestyling, simple steps for moms to find style and confidence. There you go. And it's the kind of book that actually, 
if you haven't read it, I think you could still jump in on the discussion. Like there's no plot spoilers or anything like that. So I didn't actually read Girl, Wash Your Face. I read like the first chapter at Barnes and Noble and I just felt it was a little, yeah, I can't, I just, anyway, whatever. If you found it inspiring, that's awesome because that's great. It just didn't do it for me. So we're going to read that. I'll put that when this uploads. I will update the description box. I will put it in there. But one more time, um, life styling, simple steps for moms to find style and confidence. And I'm thinking that instead of doing YouTube live, we do Facebook live because we can all upload pictures of our outfits to the Facebook group. And you really can't do that on YouTube. Let's do that. I don't have a date yet, but let's assume it's towards the end of April, possibly first week of May, somewhere in there. Go get the book. Think about styling an outfit. Join the Facebook group. Um, upload it to the Facebook book club group page. And we'll chat on Facebook Live. We'll try Facebook Live for a change. Does everyone have Facebook here? If you don't have Facebook, it's free. Let's do it. Let's support Mikayla. Let's all go buy the book. That's what we're doing. Not on Facebook. Get on Facebook. Make up a fake name. Everybody does it, apparently. <laughs> so, um, all right, we're gonna do it. Okay, it's 9.02, the wine has kicked in. I should not be on a live YouTube stream. So, that's what we're gonna do. Why not? It's, it's a win-win. We might all learn something and we're supporting a pretty amazing woman. So anyway, that's it. I'm going to say good night. I'm not entirely sure how to stop this live stream. So bear with me. I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm really glad it was a nice little small group. It was fun. Um, also, so I will post the giveaway in the Facebook group probably tomorrow, not tonight. And I will also ask all of you to throw in some book suggestions uh, to read through April in addition to our book club choice because <laughs> Dean Martin, stay on, let's see what happens. I'm tired. Um, so thank you all of you for coming and hanging out with me. I think this was a lot of fun. I just do this because I enjoy reading and I enjoy talking about books and that's it. That's the only reason why, whether there's a hundred of you in the room or 60,000 of you, uh, this is just out of, done out of pure joy and love of reading a book. So thanks everyone. And tomorrow is my regular upload. It is a Walmart haul. I had a lot of fun with this. I'm actually wearing the shoes ugh, that I hauled right there. So I love them and I wear them. And I will see you all virtually tomorrow. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. I'll see you later. Have a great evening. Thanks for hanging with me.